In the previous video, we looked at doing multi-factor for XOR. That actually turned out to be a bit of a walk in the park, frankly, uh, especially compared to trying to get it right for the admin login on uh, Strata on Firewall. So that's what this video is going to be about. It's going to be about using Duo MFA and we're going to use Cisco Ice, going to configure it on Cisco Ice. I was going to use Free Radius, and in fact, Free Radius does actually figure in the background, but I'll explain about that in a minute. Um, and yeah, and for the admin uh, portal. So uh, let's get going. Okay, so here on this site, you can see the traffic flow for this, and they're using specifically in any Connect secure mobility client. We wouldn't tend to do it this way for, well, we wouldn't do it this way at all for Global Protect because Global Protect has the ability to incorporate it natively. But in this particular instance, we have Mobility Client. So that goes through, that's going to be our firewall to Cisco ICE. Cisco ICE is then going to back that off to the authentication proxy. The authentication proxy then needs to use the primary um, authentication. So in this particular instance, that's where Free Radius comes in. I'm going to use Free Radius on the same box as the authentication proxy. But in general, what you would tend to do is you would back that off to your Active Directory, I guess, and then the posture controls then become something else again. But at the minute, we're just looking at creating a super user, uh, admin user, getting them authenticated, and having to um, respond to a push message and then that coming back. So then that goes off to the authentication proxy, goes off to Duo, get a push, accept, come back, and then it passes back the accept message, and in you pop. So um, so that's yeah, so that's the, the traffic flow, um, and that's what we'll do. So on our icebox, we're already using uh, Radius to authenticate the users. Um, so that's already set up. What you're going to do is you're going to have ICE pass it through to an external RADIUS server. That's going to be proxied through the Duo proxy to, in this particular instance, Free RADIUS or your AD. And then ICE is going to pass back the deny or, or accept. Okay, that configuration is done here. Um, I'm assuming that you've already got your identities. Um, we're going to use this particular fella here because it might as well it gives us a good thing because that's the username I use to log on normally which isn't through radius so it gives the the separation between the two to basically prove that it works um, so yes yeah, so without further ado let's create the uh, external radius server and the radius sequence which is what then gets passed into the uh, authentication policy Right, so essentially, as I say, the plan is to create an external radius server, which then goes into the policy set. Then ICE will go off and query that. So it should also be noted as well, of course, that you have to have your usernames and passwords stored on that server. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I know it's not entirely ideal and almost sort of removes the... Um, the impetus, I suppose, for, for ICE itself. However, ICE is used a lot in um, corporate environments, so it, it kind of makes sense to have your authentication done in one place, even though it's backing off to, to something else. And of course, multi-factor or two-factor authentication, whilst it isn't the silver bullet, it is um, it is very much, should be standard now. And I, I don't see any reason why, with services like Duo out there, I don't really see any reason why it shouldn't be. Duo proxy, host IP, the shared secret, very original. Now, because I'm running two services on the box, I'm running the Duo proxy and I'm running the uh, free radius. I didn't want to get into a point or to, to a time where there was a, a conflict. So I'm actually running my proxy on port 
thousand. The server timeout, you have to give it plenty of time to get back. So they recommend, Duo recommend 65 seconds and given my testing, that certainly seems to be the case. Connection attempts three. Yeah, why not? Okay, so now we've got our external radius server there. And now we need to add a server sequence. Don't know why this is your proxy. Just to make it that bit different. Okay. So if we go back to our policies policy sets, we can see the Palo Alto networks here, default network access, which would then lead us down this path here particularly for the authentication policy, if I'm in this user group then permit access, blah 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 blah, so on. However, when I change this to the proxy sequence, you can now see that there is no longer any options. Sure, you can change that if you want but that's literally only going to be um, where it's coming from so that's the condition that passes us down this path so that basically means that a lot of the posturing then is then done by what's returned from the proxy server okay so uh, that's that we will now go and configure the firewall and then at the end we'll get into some of the the configuration files for the duo proxy it to be fair the documentation on duo's website is awesome and if you follow it, it it's all good there's a few little gotchas that may be gotchas for me and not for other people um, and vice versa um, and we'll just go through those uh, this is gonna be the first one as well the first video that I'm going to redo into proper form and put on uh, the website as a as a blog because I haven't done anything there for quite some time. So let's move over to the firewall and configure that. So on the firewall uh, we're going to create the radius server which we'll do now and we're going to call it our Cisco ISE because remember we're going to use that as the initial contact and then that's going to use the proxy timeout is going to be 65 seconds otherwise we're going to end up in a right mess with multiple um, authentications going to use pap and I'm going to call it and it is add the secret Firm. and it's on 1812 which is a standard port there's one thing I forgot to do there and I'm going to do it now because we want this to be used just for administrator use so it can't be used for just a standard user ok so now that's done I'm going to create the authentication profile which is going to be my ICE2FA profile, the authentication type radius, server profile is going to be Cisco ICE, um, that's all good, the rest of that's all good, and on the allow all, otherwise we'll run into all manner of problems, and OK. Now we're going to create our admin user. Wow, that was bizarre. Okay, it's going to be our curling authentication profile is going to be the IS2FA. I'm going to give him super user privileges. Uh, all good. Okay, and that is it. That's um, that's that. So we've got our radius server. That's going to talk to ICE. 
ice is going to go off and do its and do its thing then we've got our authentication profile there which you know allows host to authenticate and then our administrator there it could possibly be an idea to use an authentication sequence as well just in case something doesn't work so if I'm doing this on the fly um, so you've got your authentication um, profiles so we'll use that one first and we say home VPN next so if it can't be if you can't connect then it will use the my user account that's local to the box we'll commit that and then uh, come back to that in a minute and then we can see quite apart from anything else we can see plenty of the times I tested but then we can see the authentication there and if we look at this we can see the steps that it went through created a new session, generated a new session ID received a request for the radius server sequence, that's our server sequence that we put in for the duo forwarded the uh, remote radius request and then returned the radius access accept and I had a prompt on my phone because it was set to push um, and then I got my my administrative access so uh, that's all good so now we'll just take a quick look at the configuration of the duo um, proxy uh, free radius is free radius uh, there's so much documentation out there I'm not going to bore anybody any further with that on here um, but yeah we'll have a look at that now and then uh, and then that'll be me done so just to have a quick look at the authentication proxy uh, and just how this is set up so you have two sections essentially and it's it's really quite intuitive you've got AD client so if you was going to be backing this off directly to AD that's where you get your posture in and your replies back and you can use your VSAs your vendor specific attributes for radius that's where you'd put that in there as it is I've commented that out because I just want to use radius client as I said before, using free radius, which is also on this same this same box. So the host is one two seven zero zero twenty. You put the secret in there. Pass through all equals true. Just passing through all the attributes that you get when you log in, um, as they are. Then the server underneath. This is your uh, configuration for the duo service itself. So your your key that you'd get when you sign up to Geo, you'll get all this information there, your secret key, the host address, the radius IP that this is listening on, sorry, the client for, sorry, so it's it will accept 10.0.290, radius secret, uh, fail mode is safe, the other one is, ah, I've forgotten what the other one is, but if it fails, safe essentially means uh, I think it's secure the other one. Safe means that it will allow the authentication if it fails and secure is it will not allow the authentication. Uh, client is radius client that refers to that so that it can then go off and query the radius server and the port that it's going to be running on which is 2000. Um, these here so if you had several um, which means some people do it's generally you have some kind of redundancy uh, you would have the radius client there with radius client 1 exactly as it says here as it points out here AD client 2 uh, and you would then configure the next lot underneath that one as that um, that's pretty much it for for that there's not much configuration to do there it's really easy to build I say the the geo documentation documentation is fantastic um, so yeah, so that's that's it.